Hello and welcome back to Stop and Go F1 for this, our first video of the day for the Imola GP, and it is Formula 3. Really good uh, weekend of racing here from Formula 3. We're going to go into all of it in a little bit. Make sure you like and subscribe. We've got loads of stuff coming out today, not just Formula 3, but in about an hour or so we'll have the Formula 2. Then later on this afternoon, of course, the Formula 1. Then tomorrow all our driver ratings will be out. But let's get into the Formula 3, starting with yesterday's sprint race. And it was Stuka on pole with Noel Leon alongside. Um, we get a stall on the formation lap from the person with my favourite name to see and least favourite name to pronounce. That is Infrapuzazak stalls on the grid uh, starts from pit lane and as lights go out Noel Leon is able to take the lead through the first ch chicane round the outside of turn one but we get a safety car as Mary Boyer is in the gravel now if you are a fan of safety cars the F3 sprint is the race for you this weekend because, my God, we got a lot of safety cars. The safety car does come in, though, on lap four. And Leon has a very good getaway off the back of the safety car. Van Hoopen goes wide and loses a place to uh, Boganovic. And nearly loses a place to Mini, but is able to catch that back. Uh, Mega Tunif is able to get past Mini as Van Hoopen pushes him wide. So Mini and is caught up in this big battle here between all these different drivers. And ends up losing a place. Um... Magatunif is also able to get past um, Van Hoopen. Uh, Mini, though, is all over the back of Van Hoopen. This uh, group of four cars really close together. Some really nice battling there. But it is ruined because the safety car is out. Because Voisin is in the wall after Charlie Wirtz hit him. Uh, but that only lasts till lap. Eight. There is a 10 second penalty for Tommy Smith who caused a collision and this time uh, Leon does not get a good getaway at all. Uh, really um, close between him and second place but he manages to keep the lead. Mega Tunif is off now into the gravel and he's also gone into the back of Dino Boganovic. Uh, this brings out the safety car. It looks like Boganovic does have damage on the back of his car from where Mega Tunif has hit him, but it didn't seem to affect him that much. Safety car in again on lap 11, and a much better getaway for Leon this time round. There's a five-second penalty for Stenshorn. I'm not sure why. Incredible move from uh, Gabriele Mini around the outside of the Villeneuve chicane on Van Hoopen for P7. Really, really good stuff there. Another penalty now for Charlie Wirtz. 10 second penalty this time for causing a collision. Uh, that was the one on uh, Voisin that brought out the second safety car. Uh, Gerfer passes uh, Tramnitz for P2, that's on lap 13, but it's been a while since we've seen the safety car, and the safety car comes back out, uh, this time because Infrapuzazak has stopped on the Infrapuza track, uh, but he is able to get the car going again, so the safety car comes out for no real reason uh, this time. He does get the car back to the pits and retires from there, safety car back in on lap 15. Uh, Stuka falls really, really far back, now Stuka I think was in 4th place, at this time, and I think because it was just such a short safety car period, because Infrapuzazak was able to get the car going again and go to the pits, I don't think Stuka realised that we were going again. So we on this safety car restart, we have the top three cars, and then a gap, and then everyone else. I don't think I've ever seen that kind of thing happen before. But yeah, bad start from Stuka, good start from Leon. You'd think after all these safety cars, he would have got good at them, and he has. He's very good restart from Noel Leon. Uh, Boganovic is easily able to pass Stuka for P4, because Stuka does not have the um, the uh, toe from anyone else in front of him. Uh, further back, um, Stuka hits Browning, and Browning is out. Um, I'm writing this out, yes. Yes, he is. I forgot he is out, yes. This was yesterday I'm reading my notes from. So yeah, Stuka hits Browning, and Browning goes into the wall. Browning, the championship leader at this point. Um, and whilst he whilst he hits him and he goes straight, he actually blocks uh, Mini, who then loses a place back to uh, Van Hoopen. So a lot going on there. Doesn't bring out the safety car. Does bring out the virtual safety car on lap 18 of 18. Now, I thought that this would be race ending 
on a virtual safety car, but no, we decide to remove the safety virtual safety car with half a lap to go, and it must have caught Noel Leon unaware as well, because the race leader is completely caught napping by Oli Gerfer, who takes the lead in on the last lap in the last sector of the race, and uh, Oli Gerfer takes the win from Noel Leon, Tim Tramnitz in third, Boganovic fourth, uh, Stuka in fifth, Gabriele Mini sixth, Van Hoopen seventh, Limblad eighth, Bedrin ninth, and Ramos in tenth. It's then revealed, though, that we have a five-second penalty for Gerfer and a five-second penalty for Tramnitz for... Um, it was because of uh, their actions behind safety car. Now, it seemed like they were saying that they went before the virtual safety car ended. But when you watch the replay, that just wasn't true. So they give the win to Noel Leon, but then hours later, they go, oh, actually, no, that wasn't right. And they give Gunther the win back. So Gunther wins on track. Only, only, not Gunther, Gerfer, sorry. Gerfer wins on track. Then, before the podium has it taken away, so no Leon stands on the top uh, step of the podium. Then, hours after, Gerfer goes, oh no, you actually have one. So, Gerfer wins the sprint. The sprint, full of safety cars, full of controversy, full of penalties. Gerfer actually won it. And now we go across to the F3 feature race, which, thankfully, is a far more straightforward affair. So, it's an all-trident top three on the grid, with Ramos on pole, Forder only second, and Megatunif in third. And going into this race, in terms of the Formula 3 Championship, we have a really interesting setup here, with three drivers all um, tying for the Championship lead on 37 points. They were Forder only, who, like I said, starting second, Gabrielli Mini, who is starting 6th, and Luke Browning, who is starting ninth. All of them on 37 points. And as the lights go out, Sergio Ramos uh, got away really... Is, is his name Sergio Ramos? Is that a footballer? I don't know. His name is... We know, his, we know his surname is Ramos, that's for sure. Ramos gets away well, but Fornaroli looks down the outside uh, to take the lead, but he locks up and can't get past. Further back, Gabrielli Mini had a dreadful start. Um nearly stalling the car on the getaway. I think he went from uh, P6 to P12 on the start, so a real fight back from Mini throughout the rest of the race. Two laps later, uh, Fornaroli is able to take the lead, uh, going around the outside of Ramos. Luke Browning as well is looking around the outside of Arvid Limblad, but he can't make it stick and actually loses a place to Dino Boganovic for P6. The middle of the top 10 here for this race really really quite competitive throughout the entire race there's an incredible move from Oli Gerfer around the outside of Ramos for P2 at this point Ramos really I don't know what happened but he's just really struggling with his tyres from the start and despite having a good start he just goes backwards throughout this race uh, we cut to um, we have a replay of Gerfer overtaking Ramos and when we come back to the race Gerfer is in the lead and Fornaroli is in P5 so there's a bit of confusion as to what's happened here. But we go on board with Fornaroli on a replay. And going into turn one, his engine just cut out completely. And then came back. And by the time he came back, he's gone from P1 to P5. So really, really unlucky here from Fornaroli. <clears throat> yeah, so really unlucky from Fornaroli there, who has been having incredible pace at this point, and now will need to just do it all again. Uh, further back, Tommy Smith is off the track, but is able to restart his car. Does not bring out the safety car, and I'm quite glad the FIA were a bit more patient this time in comparison to what happened the day before with Infra Puzazak. On lap 9, uh, Bedrin has a puncture, but is able to get back to the pit lane, and Fornaroli passes uh, Arvid Limblad for P4. 10 second penalty for uh, Noel Leon for forcing another car off the track. And we get a fantastic, fantastic battle between Limblad and Beganovic for basically half a lap on lap 12 uh, for P6. Really good stuff. Fornaroli continues to fight back now to P3, passing Ramos on lap 14. And like I said, Ramos just going uh, downhill from here. A lap later, he's passed by Luke Browning. Um, for P4 and a lap after that he is passed by Boganovic for P5 
Uh, Mega Tunif, though, up front, he has closed the gap to Oli Gerfa now on lap 16 as, and is within DRS range. Gerfa has been controlling the race really well since that incident with uh, Fornaroli's engine. But yeah, Mega Tunif really managing the tyres really well. And then towards the end of the race, closing that gap. And two laps later, Mega Tunif is able to have a move around the outside into turn one and takes the lead of the race. Uh, meanwhile, Stenshaw has got a 10 second penalty for forcing another driver off the track. And Mini has passed Ramos. Now, at the end of this race, lap 20 of 22, Fornaroli all over the back of Oli Gerfer. Really good attack and defend from both drivers here. In the end, uh, Fornaroli not able to make it past Gerfer. But despite that, great driving from both of them. Mega Tunif takes the win, his first ever win in Formula 3 um, for the rookie this year. Oli Gerfer in P2, uh, and it was uh, Leo Fornaroli in P3, and he is the new championship leader as well. you got to feel for him, because the only reason he didn't win this race is that brief engine out, which is just madness. He was controlling the race really well. That happened... Then from there, his pace was the fastest on track. So I reckon without that engine outage, he would have quite easily won this race. But, you know, he's just a bit of unlucky, a bit unlucky there. But despite that, still he's leading the championship, still on the podium. Some great driving from Leo Fornaroli. Uh, Luke Browning is P4, Dino Baganovic P5. Gabrielli Mini P6, Arvid Limblad P7, Ramos has to settle for P8, Mary Boyer in 9th, and the final point goes to Sebastian Montoya. A wonderful weekend of Formula 3 racing, it has to be said. And as for my star of Formula 2, now if you see my, uh, not Formula 2, sorry, star of Formula 3. If you've seen my Formula 2 or Formula 3 videos before, or F1 Academy, every weekend I like to give out the star of the racing series, so the star of Formula 3 for this one. And it's not necessarily who was the best, but who was the most entertaining, who was the one who really gripped me in the race. And this weekend I have to give it to Leo Fornaroli. Fantastic stuff from him to have that incident and then, you know, not lose his head, be really focused, fight back, finish on the podium, nearly P2, Fantastic stuff from him. So Leo Fornaroli gets the star of Formula 3 for the Imola GP. And there you go. That is Formula 3 for another weekend done. It'll be back next weekend in Monaco, which is always very exciting. Like I said, we've still got loads of stuff to come on the channel today. Formula 2 in about an hour. Formula 1 later this afternoon. So make sure you subscribe for that. Until then, though, have a good one. Goodbye.